Well, hey everybody, welcome to the update preview stream. This is Bugs here. I'm joined today by Artemis and Miss D. Say hi, guys. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, guys. So, what do we got going on this week? Well, we are over on the staging branch. It is halfway, roughly the halfway point for development in Rust for the month. And there's not a ton to show off on staging, but a couple cool things going on and some good forward progress being made and a number of fixes as well. And as always, we'll go through what is going on over here on staging. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to do at Miss D underscore, that's me in chat, and we'll get to as many questions as we have the opportunity to. Now, real quick, before we get into development news, people might be wondering, when's WIP? And so for Rustified servers, the servers wiping today are the weekly and bi-weekly Thursday wipe servers. So that's your mains, your mediums, your trios, your solos, your, mm, I'm missing a couple, smalls. Yeah, there's a couple. And uh, times. And, no, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, And they are wiping at regular scheduled time for the region, which is 3 p.m. local time for the region. That means EU wiped like, what is it, three hours ago? AUSEA wiped 11, 12 hours ago, something like that. And the U.S. servers will wipe in two hours at 3 p.m. EST. These are map wipes only as we are mid-month and it is two weeks away from the update and forced wipe which is going to be May 2nd and so let's get into it. What is going on in development? Well one interesting thing we saw get worked on the start of it started getting worked on last week and we're seeing more work on it this week is actually a new rad town coming in. And this is going to be, unlike, you know, a lot of the monument work that's being done is just reworking and redesigning current monuments and existing monuments. And that is still moving forward in various degrees of work. But we're also seeing a new Rad Town, but it's kind of a throwback to the legacy days. It looks like it's going to be that small Rad Town or something similar to that small Rad Town back in legacy and if you ever played Legacy, it would look familiar to you, but no visuals quite yet because it's still in the gray box stage. It's still in the earlier stages, but it should be cool. And some point in the next couple months, we'll probably see this old school Rad Town make a comeback. So we're looking forward to that. Also going on, there's some changes going on to door controllers. And so what they've done is made it so that door controllers can be deployed onto doors, just like code locks. And then they've added three new aux inputs to open, close, and toggle. So it looks like as of the May update, most likely, you'll be able to use automated doors in a little easier of a fashion, hooking it up to your electrical systems a little easier and all that stuff. So that is coming for door controllers. We've also got some changes to the patrol helicopter coming in, and this is on top of a number of changes we saw go live this month and that were worked on last month. And if you've been playing, you'll be aware that the behavior of the patrol copter has changed significantly. We have had a number of people complaining, especially on solo servers, that it's basically impossible to take down because it flees away before you can aggro on it and do enough damage to it. But they are doing a number of behavioral shifts to the patrol helicopter to maybe modify that and make it a little different. One of the tweaks we're seeing this week, and it's only being prototyped, so it may make it in, it may not make it in, but it's a feature where the helicopter, when damaged to the point of death and being destroyed, will seek out a nearby monument to crash at when it is destroyed. So it's going to kind of potentially have the crash zone of the patrol helicopter be more at a point of interest on the map and potentially have more contention for it and all that stuff. So that is an interesting change coming to the patrol helicopter, potentially. Once again, I say they were prototyping this feature, so maybe it won't make it in, but we'll keep you posted. Nevertheless, it does look like a number of miscellaneous behavioral shifts are coming to that good old patrol heli. Also in the realm of fixes, we've got more coming in the realm of electricity. And if you noted last month, 
uh, they made a bunch of changes to electrical systems and everything like that. And going live earlier this month, we saw a number of these smaller items no longer require electricity. And they fixed a whole bunch of phantom drain issues and things like that. And as development moves forward this month, we're basically seeing a bunch of other miscellaneous electrical fixes. So we've got a semi-full list on Rustify.com. As always, we do an article every Thursday on Rustify.com that summarizes this all in text and pictures. But basically what we're seeing is they're fixing some AND or an XOR switches emitting light when unpowered. They fix the storage monitor not taking into account partial stack changes. They've uh, fixed this default guide mesh orientation, was having some issues after rotating it, and so that's been resolved. And the they fixed the memory cell side inputs triggered by zero power circuits. So just, you know, a bunch of miscellaneous little tweaks and changes and fixes we're seeing to the electrical system in the game as well. And we expect this all to go live with the update next, uh, the next update next month, May 2nd. And on top of that, we're seeing a whole bunch of other stuff being worked on. Once again, not a ton to show off on staging uh, this week, as a lot of it still is on separate branches and things like that. But there is a new weapon being worked on, the SKS rifle, which is kind of like an old school kind of World War II kind of rifle. Uh, Semi-automatic, I think it has five rounds i'm not sure exactly once again i'm not really like a gun guy but whenever i see a new gun get added i google it and i read the google summary and that's about the extent of my knowledge but that is a new rifle being worked on once again the sks rifle they're also doing some more progress on a new truck for the game which is the m939 truck and uh, a google search on that uh, showed me that it's a kind of military transport truck, a three axle military transport, kind of one of those covered trucks. So maybe what this will be, because I, I do think it's going to be a player controlled truck. I don't know how you're going to get it, but it looks like it could be kind of like a scrap heli for the ground type of thing where you can carry a bunch of people around in it at one time. So we'll keep you posted as more comes to light on that. We've seen uh, a number of commits to that over the past couple of weeks. So I imagine at some point in the next several weeks, we'll see some iteration of that enter the staging branch. There's also some more tweaks going on to the Bradley Scientist. If you missed it last uh, month or beginning of this month, uh, going live with the update, once the Bradley is destroyed enough or damaged enough, a couple of scientists pop out of it. And we're seeing some tweaks to that behavior and some changes, including it looks like they're going to have heavy scientists pop out of the Bradley as well. This hasn't been merged in yet, so I don't know if they're all going to be heavy scientists or it's going to be just kind of random between the normal blue guys or the heavy guys. But they're also doing some stuff with regards to the behavior of them once they pop out. Some will charge and attack you. Some will take cover and flee a little bit. And so, yeah, it looks like as you're taking Bradley down in May, you'll have maybe a little bit more firepower coming at you, especially with the deploying of these heavy scientists to that event. Uh, there's also, interestingly enough, some work on being able to replace destroyed foundations. So post-raid or something like that, if someone blew out some of your foundations, um, it's uh, virtually impossible in a lot of cases currently to replace those foundations, but uh, that is being worked on to allow for the placement of foundations where they have been destroyed. So maybe this will make it, you know, a little bit more viable to uh, repair and recover your base after a raid. There's also some more work going on on the cliff reworks. And so these are the procedurally generated cliffs around the map, and they're just tweaking some stuff with that and working on a couple different biome iterations for them. And so hopefully in the near future, we'll see some improved cliffs around the map of Rust. Uh, they are allowing the vending machine to be rotated 90 degrees now. So just a little quality of life thing there. Um, there's also a whole bunch of work going on this week on missions and just overall improving the mission system in the game. And that's one of the systems that they launched, and I think they had much more plans to develop it out. And 
I think this is kind of part of the process of that, of having more complex missions, having the ability for the devs to create missions more easily on the fly, and also just improving some of the miscellaneous things with regards to how the missions work now, um, UI improvements and various things like that. So some improvements to the mission system on the way, I think that's all on a separate branch as well. So we'll wait till that gets merged in and maybe show you off some of those changes in the next week or two. They're doing a bunch of miscellaneous fixes for the minigun, including it was deleting ammo when it runs out of durability and deletes itself. So it puts the ammo back in the inventory now. And there were a bunch of just different miscellaneous minigun fixes because it's the newest weapon to enter the game. And it's not uncommon to see some tweaks and edits and fixes go live when we see a new weapon in the game. Also, with regards to entity snapping, which is the electrical I.O. entity snapping stuff where you hold left click, we're seeing that get added to a couple other things, including neon signs, CCTVs, fluid pumps and switches, and the electrical heater as well. So that'll just be a little easier to align those things in after the May update because they will snap in line with all the other stuff. We're also seeing some tweaks to the harbor topology. So the new harbors, of course, went live this month, and it's where the cargo ship will dock and everything. And I don't think we're seeing a lot of big changes to the overall layout, but this is more just some miscellaneous fixes and patches to the terrain that weren't exactly how they wanted them. Uh, so just some smaller tweaks going on in the realm of the harbor topology. They also fixed some scaling issues with the military flamethrower world model and had it work in the weapon racks as well and everything. So that world model will be a little bit more sized properly, you could say. And we're also seeing uh, some more work on the Nexus body of work. This is the clan system and the server to server transfer uh, type of stuff. We saw that get merged into main last week, which potentially was a signifier of it coming out sometime in the near-ish future. And yeah, we're seeing some more commits on it. So it does seem like they're getting that Nexus body of work ready to go. I think at some point in the next couple months, we'll probably see a new server type show up on the in-game server list. And it'll be like a official community modded and Nexus. And then those Nexus servers will kind of be like a, a couple nodes in one server and you'll be able to travel to the different nodes. And then also baked into all that stuff is that clan system, which through the clan table, you'll be able to manage a much larger group. It's kind of like the team UI, but on crack because you'll be able to manage these people uh, across multiple nodes, multiple different nexuses. And you'll be able to manage, instead of like 10 people on the team UI or whatever, you'll be able to manage like 100 people and post messages and stuff like that. So that's a whole big world of change coming in. Given it's such a large project, I don't think we're going to necessarily see it go live like next month or anything like that. And I think probably Facepunch will be the first to launch some Nexus servers before anyone else does so they can really test it in production a little bit. But we'll keep you posted as more comes to light on that Nexus server-to-server -server transfer stuff and the whole clan system. They've also fixed shotgun traps going off once an auth player was in front of them when a TC is reskinned. So that was a little goofy thing that came in with the uh, new tool cupboard skin this month. So they've resolved that. And a small fix for having to run three meters away from a stash and return to reveal the stash. So that was just something that had been in there for a little while and they've resolved it. So you no longer have to run away and run back to access the stash. And yeah, that's about what we got going on this week. A bunch of fixes and some forward progress, but nothing, nothing really crazy to show off yet. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on in development so far. Misty, we have any questions from the audience we want to cover? Yeah, we have some. Um, do we have any updates regarding the horses? There was an exploit hotfix that completely ruined them at the start of the week. Are they getting fixed? 
I haven't seen anything specifically on that, but I do think the devs are aware of it, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see some change in behavior. It might at this point take until May 2nd for the big update and force wipe, because generally speaking on the first Thursday, they'll release a big update and that is the force wipe. And then for the following weekend and into the next week, we'll see some hot fixes go live that are optional server client hot fixes. But after that, generally speaking, they just wait until the next uh, first Thursday to release those things. So potentially we could see some change in behavior there, but I don't think we will if we do until May 2nd at the earliest. And this is not a question, but it's for you, Bugs. Your voice is pretty calming, man. You could tell us how everything will be shit and it will still be fine. <laughs> oh, thank you for <laughs> saying that. I uh, I do actually like most, most of the time I meditate before I do the stream. I do try to be calm and peaceful when it comes to this just because, hey, we're just sharing, you know, development news and stuff. I think a lot of times, and maybe I'm just not a good streamer. I feel like a lot of streamers get very worked up and get very, you know, excited and agitated and I don't know. That's just not my vibe so much. I just like speaking Cheer. what's going on and being chill about it. So, but I appreciate you saying so. Um, do you know if there's any fixes planned for the ping estimate tool for the server owners? Yeah, they're still working on that from what I can see. They, they launched that, that ping estimation stuff. And I, I totally understand why they're doing that with all the A2S caching and everything. But um, I think it, didn't behave as intended to put it lightly and there's still i think a number of tweaks to do before that's really ready to go so i think they're still working on that and i think it, it's very probable we'll see something come the may 2nd update with regards to that um this is a little longer let me see i am a bit wondering to be honest, don't laugh for this question, please. Is the clan table already in the game and working on officials? Well, the clan table is in the game in the sense that a moderator can spawn it in and could place it, but it's not in the game in the sense that in normal vanilla gameplay, you're gonna come across one or you're gonna be able to craft or place one. So it's a, it's a functionality that is merged into the background, so to speak, and is kind of technically in the game, but it's not something that's been deployed into the normal vanilla gameplay cycle quite yet. And I don't think that the clan table is going to be a part of normal server gameplay. I think it's just going to be part of the Nexus body of servers, whatever that ends up looking like. Does the vending machine rotating 90 degrees work in doorways? That's a very That's, good question. Yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think it's merged at the moment, so it's not something that we can test. But as soon as it is, definitely it's something to test. Yeah, definitely try to remind us next week. Uh, and that's the thing oh, about we this know. week. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because a lot of stuff is still in progress right now, and, and there's not much merged in as far as these new changes goes. But we'll, probably by next week, it'll be merged in, and we can test that in the doorways then. How about those crazy waves? Are they getting fixed? I'm not aware of them changing anything else with the water at the moment, but... I mean, we've seen so many iterations of that water. I think we're on water six now or something like that, or we just saw water five was the last version to go live. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some tweaks to the water in the near future. But as I'm thinking about commits in the past week or whatever, I don't recall seeing anything um, specifically about that. So, so we'll have to wait and see. Do fireworks still go off all at the same time? That was my big annoyance when making shows a while ago trying to time stuff. You know, I'm not aware. I I haven't messed with the fireworks too much recently. So do you guys know Artemis or Misty? Yeah, unfortunately, no. No, I'm not, I wasn't aware. Was, was that some sort of bug then where you couldn't time them? Or... No, I don't think it's a bug. I think it's just how it is. Um, 
I have no idea if it's going to be, what is it, not fixed, but made in a different way. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about fireworks recently, so I imagine the behavior will stay roughly the same. See here, is there any word on when they might fix the rocking chair glitch? Mm, which one is that? Man, it's hard to keep no track of all these freaking glitches, Swimming I'll be with honest rabbits. with you. What issue is that? Can you please type that? And like, I vaguely remember one, but I thought they fixed it already, but maybe there's another one. I'll be honest, it's, it is hard to keep track of all the miscellaneous uh, glitches and fixes going on, but we do our best here. Okay, he's saying, you put the rocking chair on the edge of the... on. Blah. <laughs> you put the rocking chair oh, yeah. on the edge of the roof, and when you get out, you're floating, and you could actually go across the map like that. What the heck? Yeah, I think I did see a video of that. I don't know. I imagine the devs will fix that one pretty soon. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing it, though, regardless. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't try it at home. I don't see any more questions, so let's do a recap. Yeah, and I think it will probably be a shorter one this week, just as a heads up. There's not a ton to show off, and I'm a little low energy, but we'll do a little recap decap. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to do at Misty underscore that's me in chat. But what we've got is we are halfway through the month for development in Rust, and we're seeing a number of fixes and some quality of life stuff and a whole bunch of work on forward features including a new rad town will be coming in a new type of monument which apparently will be a throwback to the legacy days of the small rad town so that's going to be pretty cool that just started getting worked on the other week so i don't think we're going to see it next month it'll probably be a couple months before we see it go in the game but it should be a nice little dose of nostalgia when it does come in because it'll be a nice throwback to the legacy days we're also seeing some changes to door controllers. So the automated opening and closing of doors will soon be a little bit different as you can now, first of all, deploy the controllers on the doors, just like a code lock. And then they've also added three new aux inputs for open, close, and toggle. So basically you'll just be able to utilize the opening and closing of doors through these controllers a little easier than before, it looks like. Uh, on top of that, we're seeing some changes to the patrol helicopter, specifically the behavior that shifted last month in a big way. They're tweaking that behavior a bit, and they're even prototyping the ability to have the helicopter seek out a nearby monument to crash at on death. So once it's destroyed enough to actually go down, it's going to floor the throttle and go potentially to the nearest monument and crash there, making it more of a point of interest on the map type of thing and maybe have more people coming at it. Now this is a feature that's just being prototyped so I don't know if it for sure will make it into the game or not but regardless we should know in the next week or two as we get closer to the May 2nd update and force wipe and uh, on top of that we're seeing some other tweaks and changes to the patrol heli behavior in general. There's also a bunch of fixes for electricity. These are miscellaneous little things like lights showing when they shouldn't have shown and uh, some guide mesh orientation stuff. So just uh, in the realm of a bunch of miscellaneous quality of life and little fixes when it comes to electricity stuff. We're also seeing work on a new rifle coming in, the SKS rifle. No visuals on this yet, but I do believe that is more of like a World War II era kind of uh, not bolt action rifle, but semi-automatic. Um, you know, when you're out, it does the ping when you're out of bullet, that type of thing. I think that's it. We'll see. There's also more work on the M939 truck. So I think that's going to be a player controlled kind of military transport vehicle. So maybe you'll be able to get you and a big group of your buddies in the back of that truck and traverse the lands of rust when it does come in. We're seeing some tweaks to the Bradley Scientist, you know, the ones that pop out when you damage Bradley enough. They not only are adding heavy scientists into the mix, I don't know that they're all going to be heavies or it'll be a mix of blue and heavies, 
but they're also changing the behavior there where some are going to run after you and, and kind of run straight towards you immediately. Others will take cover behind the Bradley. And yeah, we're just going to see some tweaks to that likely coming in in two weeks with the May 2nd update in Force Wipe. We're seeing some more changes to the cliff reworks. So around the procedurally generated maps, we have all those cliffs. They're reworking those cliffs to, I imagine, just you know improve them. And uh, I'm very interested to see what that ends up looking like, but we're just seeing a bunch of work in that. No visuals yet, as with pretty much most of the stuff, but we'll let you know as soon as something comes in. Uh, they are allowing the vending machine to be rotated 90 degrees. There's various improvements going on for missions as well. So the whole missions in the game, I think, is at the genesis of kind of a new iteration of it, basically. They're making a bunch of fundamental improvements, and it seems like they're probably doing this to get ready to maybe add some more missions into the game as well. So we'll keep you posted on that. We're seeing a couple fixes for the minigun. Uh, specifically, it was deleting ammo when it runs out of durability and deletes itself. So um, now it's just going to put the ammo that was left in it back into your inventory. And we're seeing a bunch of other kind of miscellaneous fixes when it comes to that mini gun. Also, when it comes to entity snapping, that IO snapping that went live the other week, uh, that has been added to a couple devices, including neon signs, CCTV cameras, fluid pumps and switches, and the electrical heater as well. So you'll soon be able to snap all those things in with all the other components, and that'll be nice. Uh, we're seeing some tweaks to the harbor topology, nothing crazy there and some tweaks to the military flamethrower world model. Sizing was off. We're seeing more commits on the Nexus stuff. So that's that server to server clan system stuff. Still think that's kind of a ways off, but the team is definitely moving forward with it. Um, we're also seeing a fix for the shotgun traps going off once an, off, an auth player was in front of them when a TC was reskinned. So that's, what the, that's just a glitch that made it in with the new TC skin that they have resolved. And finally, in the realm of glitches, the, there's a fix for having to run three meters away from a stash and return to reveal the stash. So you'll just be able to reveal it uh, immediately, which should be nice. But yeah, that's about what we've got going on for Rust development this week and this month. And as always, we'll be back next week, uh, same time, same place, 1 p.m. Eastern, we do it every Thursday, go through what is going on in Rust development. Also, rustified.com. I do an article every Thursday. It goes live first thing, uh, midnight Eastern time. And it just summarizes everything in text and pictures that's going on in Rust development. And yeah, I just want to take a moment. We are going to wind down a little early here, but I do just want to thank everyone. Just a few minutes, though. Uh, just a few. We got a couple more questions. Yeah, just got a few. Yeah, I just want to Okay, we can there, do some questions. You know? Let's yeah. do some more questions. Thank you, Vex. Okay, Anytime. so actually a good one that I just saw, and I think we should do that. Please put closed captions for hearing impaired viewers. And I just found an extension that can do that. So from next week, we could probably get that up. Oh, cool. Yeah, we could, uh, we could potentially try that. Yeah. I'm all and, for accessibility. Yeah, and then sorry to ask again. Any info on that pain that causes a jump on the CPU every five minutes? No, I'm not sure. I think the devs are aware of that and working on that, but uh, I'm not sure of any resolution as of yet. Okay, that's it. Bye. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> well, yeah, just a huge thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, a lot of people think we're... Um, you know, the developers of the game or on the face bunch payroll and neither of those are the case. We're just an independent group of people and organization who loves running the best servers that we can and reporting on Rust development news. And the only way we can do this week after week, month after month, year after year, it's going on 10 years now we've been doing this. The only way we've been able to do that is through the support of the community. So I want to take a moment and just express my gratitude to each and every one of you for tuning in to people who give bits and subscribe on Twitch and to our wonderful, beautiful, loyal VIP customers. Thank you all so much for the support and much love to you all. And also, Miss D and Artemis, thank you as always for being my co-MCs here. As always, you're welcome. Yeah, you're most welcome. 
Yeah, and we've got a bit of a short one today, but once again, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We will be back same time, same place next week, 1 p.m. Eastern time here on Twitch. And in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful wipe. This is Bugs, signing off.